place. So I was thinking when I was going to sleep last night and I was thinking of video ideas, that's usually the time I think of video ideas. I've been thinking, I haven't done a story time video in quite a long time. I don't remember what my last story time video really was. Um, so I was thinking of different stories to tell and there was this one that stuck out in my mind. So I'm going to discuss the time that I ran away from home. First, let me start by saying that I do not condone anything like running away from home when you are young or even when you're older. I don't condone running away from home unless there's like abuse going on or whatever. Um, this is something I did when I was stupid and I was younger and those two tend to mix a lot and cause quite a bit of trouble. And yes, I forgot to do my eyebrows. Sorry. So they're going to look janked for this video. So sorry. Um, okay. Basically, I had just turned 18 years old and I had, I was, you guys know I've discussed my first boyfriend, my first real boyfriend who I don't like talking about. His name was Jack. Um, on this channel, his name was Jack. His name was not Jack in real life, um, but on this channel, he's known as Jack. So this was gearing towards the end of our relationship and what I was doing when I was working was... I was happy to be working, one, because I actually loved working, but also it gave me an excuse to get away from him. And when I had one of the best jobs ever, which was working as a supervisor at um, Spencer's Gifts in a mall near my house, which I, I excelled at, and that's a different story. If you guys want to hear about that story, let me know down in the comments or give this video a like because I will talk to you about that story as well. Um, he knew my schedule. He knew when my bosses were not going to be there. So he basically helped the situation of me not being able to keep a job because he would stalk me there and he wouldn't leave. And so there was about a brief week, week and a half where I actually was able to get away from him because he was in an institution. So I found another job and it was at East Meets West. And if you don't know what East Meets West is, um, I'm sorry if you don't know what East Meets West is. It's like a very hippie store, Wiccan store, you know, kind of, it's, it's very, very nice. They have incense, they have st statues, they have tchotchkes, they have a whole bunch of stuff. They have posters, t-shirts, what have you. And all names are gonna be changed in this video because just in, I, I just don't like using people's real names if I don't have their permission. So I met a girl there by the name of Jenny. We're gonna call her Jenny. And she was a few years older than me and I had been Wiccan, as you guys know, for quite a few years by this point. And I saw her um, playing with some ruin, ro ruin rocks, ruin stones. And I was like, oh my God, are you pagan as well? And she said, yeah. And we hit it off like right away. And she was one of like, uh, like the supervisors in this store as well. So I gained a lot of trust in her mainly because I was not allowed to have friends because of Jack. Um, he did not like it when I had friends that he was not aware of and that he was not also friends with. So if we were not sharing the same friends, he did not approve of them and I was not allowed to have them. Anyway, long story short, me and her became best friends. We were like sisters. We came into, we carpooled to work together. I mean, I slept over her house. I basically was her little puppy dog who followed her around and she would, and she introduced me to all her friends, which incidentally was a really great thing because through friends of friends of friends, that's how I met my fiance, Corey. So, um, but that's a different story. But, um, so we became the Denny's bums. We were the local Denny's near the house. The Denny's was across the street from the mall that I worked at. So we were there literally every single day. So, um, 
you know, we all became a group of friends and I finally felt like I belonged somewhere. Um, I had gotten rid of Jack and he, you know, he was still trying to contact me and trying to, you know, get into my life. But I was like, you know what, I've got new friends now, I've got loyal friends now, I've got people who care about me and this is great. And I loved Jenny very much like a sister and she became close with me and my mother and even though my mother kind of the first moment she met her said something something's up with her something's not right but that's because my mom can tell when she sees somebody and meets them she's very intuitive and she can tell when people are lying anyway so one night out of nowhere Jenny comes up to me and she had well First, let me point out, she had a boyfriend named Mike. Um, I'm not gonna go further into that yet, but she um, she had some kind of ticket back in Pennsylvania when she was driving out there, and she needed to go pay it. And she, we were all living in New Jersey at this point, and she um, said that she had to go to Pennsylvania and this was at nighttime, um, and she was like, she really didn't want to go alone. So she asked all of the friends in the group, and they all had stuff to do. They all had jobs. They all, all had school. They had stuff to do the next day. And I said, I'll go. You know, I've got nothing to do. You and I work pretty much the same shift at the jo same job, so I'll go with you. And she was like, great. So we were going to be borrowing a mutual friend's car which was actually a pickup truck and like a two seat pickup truck. So it was very, very, very compact and tight in there. <laughs> and I called my parents and I told them that this was happening. And they said, um, no, no, you're not. You're not going out of state in the middle of the night for days at a time. And then, no, we're not allowing this. Now people think that just because someone turns 18 years old, that that automatically means that they are an adult and they are old enough to take on adult responsibilities, which is in 99.9% .9 of the time, it is not true. You are not old enough. When you were 18, you are still a kid. I'm sorry if that makes you angry, but it's true. Um, and it was very true in my case. And they said, if, you know, and I got back to the house and Jenny was waiting in the car and they said if you leave this house you are gonna be in the most trouble and you have no idea what's gonna be coming your way if you leave this house so um, me being the bitchy 18 year old I was when I was like this is my friend she's like my sister she'll never you know betray me she's always gonna be by my side and they said don't you dare walk out that door and so I went upstairs to my room and I packed a bag for a two day trip and I walked out the door and I ran away from home and basically gave my spit in my parents' face, you know, and I feel really terrible about it now. Um, and we were in Pennsylvania. First of all, this bitch could not drive for her life and for my life. So I was terrified the whole way there, but I was doing this because I was so loyal to her and I was just so needing to find somebody to be with because of the relationship that I had been in. So we are driving all night, all morning to Pennsylvania. If you don't know this, Pennsylvania is a very large and long state. <laughs> um, and I don't remember much of what happened on that trip. I know we stopped by a pizza hut for like breakfast for some reason it was open for breakfast maybe early lunch and I told her I needed to change out of my clothes and she like her and I got undressed and dressed in the parking lot for some reason and she was laughing because this old guy was staring at it was just that's not me okay that's not who I am and I just I really want people to know that that's not the person I am and the 
I remember being in the courthouse and I had not slept for like three days. So I fell asleep. The courthouse kind of looked like a church almost. It was set up much, very much like a church. And they called her back and I fell asleep like in one of the queues. Is that what they're called? I think they're called queues. And she tapped me on the shoulder, woke me up, and we had to go to another place near a college for her to do to get her picture taken something i don't know all this legal stuff i barely remember the trip but um like there were kids like coming in and getting their guns that were confis con confiscated um like in this college place and i'm like terrified at this point and this is the point where i was like maybe i should have listened to my parents this was not a good idea and she, on the way back, like we went, she, we were very into the paranormal stuff and she took us ghost hunting, her and the few friends we hung out with. And she believed in this creature and she named it, she named it the Jackal. And she said that it was haunting her, that it was following her, that it was evil. And we were in the truck in the pitch dark on like the turnpike and she swerves and almost gets us into a complete crash, almost kills us. And I said, what the hell, what are you doing? And she said, the jackal just came up into my face and scared the hell out of me. Bitch was crazy, but still I was in love with her, you know, not like that but she was like my big sister. She was like my best friend in the entire world. And one day she had come to my house. Now I have my mother who can totally vouch for me and back this up, sorry, <laughs> totally vouch for me and back this story up. And most people were like, well, she's your mother. Of course she's gonna back it up, but my mom's not that kind of person. Um, she had come to the house for a few minutes and she said she really, really wanted to dump Mike that she was making fun of how he was in bed. She was just dissing him completely. She was saying how she would do anything to get rid of him. Like she really wanted to get away. And she even asked me and or my mother to hit on him and get him in bed so she can have a reason to dump him. That, that was, she actually asked if we would do that. Me and my mother who is a married woman so if it was just me, I could kind of get it, but my mother as well, weird. Anyway, we both declined that and just said, no, just break up with them. And she was like, no, 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 I have to, you know, have a legit excuse why I need to break up with him. And a couple days later, we were shopping at um, an indoor flea market near the house. It was me, Je uh, Jenny, and Mike, and Anthony, I'll call him and a couple other friends and we were going through there and I needed a ride home so Jess said, Mike, can you take Blaze home? And he said, sure, why not? And so we're driving home, I'm talking about how much, you know, Jess means to me and we're, it wasn't a very, it was kind of a quiet conversation and he dropped me off, everything was fine, okay, see you later. Not an hour after, I get a phone call and it's Jenny. And I hit the phone and I'm like, hey, what's up? And she is screaming at me. And I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, I know you screwed around with Mike. I know you tried to get with him. I know you tried to get him in bed, blah, blah, blah. He, you know, he's right here. He's telling me to my face. And I'm like, what are you talking about? First of all, I'd never do that to you. Second of all, I'm not interested in him like that. Third of all, you're the one who wanted me to do that. And she was like, I don't know what you're talking about. You are such a liar. I don't know why I ever let you in my life. From now on, from here on out, we are no longer friends. I am never speaking to you again. And she hung up and I was devastated because I had run away from home for this girl. I had gotten, I would lost my parents' trust from at that time completely, completely lost their trust. They did not talk to me for days. They barely could look at me. I had put in everything for this girl. And she flat out lied and just disappeared. I don't, 
I don't know what happened to her. I don't want to know what happened to her. But since then, I have not spoken to her. Um, I've spoken about her, and that's one of the first things me and Corey ever spoke about. I was like, do you happen to know Jenny, you know? And he's like, yeah, she's a bitch, I hate her. I'm like, oh my God, me too. <laughs> that was one of our first legit conversations. And of course, right after that, I was like, okay, well I'm left with no friends because all the friends that we hung out with pretty much stayed with her side except for one who I'm not going to discuss because he is a huge <laughs> um, me and Mike have been friends on and off um, there has been he has spread rumors about us saying that we did stuff together and we never did we kissed and that was it we kissed once and that was it but he's um, spreaded rumors that we've done a lot more than that and in graphic detail and it never happened ever 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 <laughs> but um so of course I was devastated I'm like I'm left with no friends now and of course this was the last time for like a week and a half that I let Jack back into the picture and he was like I told you that you couldn't make it without me I told you that these friends were fake and that you that they were gonna hurt you and you know just so really be careful when you're starting new relationships don't really get into it that fast this was like in the time length of maybe a month and a half a little bit less than two months so really get to know somebody before you decide they are your best friend before you decide to trust them completely you know, don't go behind your parents' back if you're still, you know, young. Don't listen to your parents, please. They know what's best for you, and it's not worth it. And you can get into a lot of trouble. You can get hurt. So that is the time that I ran away from home. And the second time I was betrayed by a group of friends. And I still, to this day, have no reason why any of the times that that has happened, that it's happened. I, nobody's given me any answers. So that is it for this story time. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you'd be so kind to go over here and click on my face or go further down below and hit the subscribe button and hit it. Did I just say hit the subscribe button and hit it? Okay, good. I just wanted to sound like full on stupid right there. Um, I always have beauty related contest giveaways and raffles all free all the time. I have at least one going on a month. I have one going on this week. Um, my Blazes Booty Fill giveaway, which has some cool Halloween type stuff going on in it. I'll link that video below so you can go and check it out. Um, and I do want to announce Mama Blaze wants to do a raffle and there are going to be some awesome, amazing beauty products in there. So keep an eye out for the next couple days. So don't forget to follow me on all of my social medias. And until next time, later Blazers, stay wicked.